welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, and I am here with Talmar Anderson, who you can find over at bossactions.com. Now, Talmar, the reason that I wanted to talk to you today is because you really came at business very strategically. Mm, yes, You really yes. wanted to spend time with your family, and you, kind, you had two reasons. Tell me yes. about the two reasons. Yes. First of all, thank you for having me, Anne. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, so I believe that you have to be very purposeful in how you design your business. And um, behind that, you know, we call it business modeling, how you're going to sell and be available and how your business is going to work. That's called business modeling. We create the whole structure of it all. And so when I was looking at my business, I had two personal events that I knew that really shaped how my business model came together. Um, the first one was I had a, a son and I was running law firms at the time. And so it was probably, I don't know, it was early in the morning and he was not even two, I don't think. And he had toddled into our, uh, to our bedroom, to my husband asking for mommy. And he's like, well, mom's out, mom's already at work. And he kind of toddled out of the room. Now we have stairs. So my husband panicked and he ran out, was trying to run after him, trying to get out of bed. He was, you know, half asleep before he could get out of bed. Our son had come back in and had something in his hands and crawled into bed. And so we even have a photograph of it. And I call that photograph. The reason my little blonde haired boy passive blue passy in his mouth and he's sleeping with a photograph of mom. Oh no. And my husband's like, I don't even know where that photo is, but he knew exactly where it was and he wanted to see his mom in the morning. Oh. So that was a really big piece is trying to build a business that would allow me to be starting my day the majority of the time here and accessible for my son. So that was a big part of the first model. And so I, to this day, I only take one early morning meeting out of the office if I have to a week. That's it. You know, the rest of the days I want to be here so that when he wakes up, he's nine now. So if he wakes up and he wants to see me, I am here no matter what. And, uh, and I, that's my commitment to him. That's something that's important for him to start his day out well. And so I get to go into my day working with my clients and doing what I do, knowing that I started him off. So that was one of the things. And then just the capacity of having a business. I actually went through a, a, um, a not good experience. My father passed away um, he'd been unwell. And so we, we sort of knew, but then again, you know, there's no such thing as perfectly planned timing. And I was about 10 days from launching um, a live events type of uh, product. And so I had to fly to Arizona. They live in Arizona. And at the time I was living in Virginia. And um, so I had to fly out there to see him before he passed. And then we're back and forth. And um, I had to completely shell that whole event. And I lost tons of money and I lost deposits. So I knew that I wanted to make sure that if I was going to go down that road again, there was some kind of support system that could be taking care of a lot of that type of event for me, but also that I had made sure to diversify my business model enough that I had other income coming in because I didn't work a lot those first few months. I was, I was helping my mom. I was visiting my sister. We were going through all their stuff, trying to figure out what, where my mom was going to live. There's a lot of personal stuff. So I really built my business model around the availability I wanted to be offering my family and then I let my clients know how I can work with them in that capacity. Absolutely. Well, and one of the things that you said is that you wanted to be available for sleepy hugs with your son, which is just like the most adorable thing I've ever heard. Seriously, like still nine. And my office is right across from his bedroom. And I'm always up working early because I'm a morning person. He'll just kind of come in, push open my door quietly, hair rustled, you know, pajama bottoms on, comes in, and he'll still curl up in my lap. Like he's a little kid, which he's not. He's four and a, over four and a half feet tall. He's super tall. <laughs> uh, and so kind of, you know, balls up into my lap. And uh, But I love that. I love that I, just we can take those moments and just cuddle. And it doesn't matter what deadline's coming or not. That just sets a tone for both of us. That's wonderful. That, what, what a magnificent way to start the day. It really is. It really is. Now, some days he's crabbier, but, you know. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one of the things you said is that um, intention is everything. So you you went into yes. this with the intention of creating it. So tell me a little bit about how how that intention shaped a little bit more around around your business. Um, intentions are really 
important piece for me. I, um, I, I, mu I have to start with why are we doing this? What is, what is, what are we intending to come up? What is the re intended result? What is the intended communication? What is the intention for success? What do we know? We have to ha define this. Now, sometimes we'll change that along the way, but if we start with a purpose and an intention, I intend to, you know, close 10 sales. I intend to be the foremost leading authority on dolphins. I, and you have to have intention behind things. Um, the more you kind of have hazard it, if I had just said, okay, well, I can only work these hours in my business because of my family, but I didn't really think about how that would serve my clients. There, there was, it wasn't just like clients be damned. There's intention in this is what my family needs for me. Then you go to back to this is what I deliver for my clients and how can I make myself available towards that intention is you know our communications it's so important in our communications and people forget that intention is self defined and what I mean by that is I will say something to you and to intend to motivate you to do something and you will you will put meaning to that intention to be offended to be unmotivated or to choose to be motivated by it, right? Um, so intention is big, but we put a lot of assumptions on it. Um, I talk a lot about intention. I think it's very important. I do too, I do too. And one of the intentions that you had um, early on in your business, and I, I feel this so strongly too. Yeah. You feel like you have to, in order to deliver value, you have to mm -hmm. deliver a thing, right? There has to be some sort of like tangible thing that you're delivering. Even though the value you provide has nothing to do with a tangible thing. Nothing to do. Your audience probably doesn't care. Your, your client just, just wants to hear from you. So tell me about how that worked for your business. So, uh, you know, I, I find that this is a predominantly female thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I, you know, I'm sure there are studies in where this comes from. But it took me a few years to get comfortable charging just to walk into a room, talk to somebody for an hour or three hours, and walk out without creating some kind of detailed report or, you know, physical binder of something. I needed that physicality to feel like I could charge the value. And so um, it, it really just came to be that the clients were like, but here's what I really want. Can I just get your opinion on this? And, but tell me, I want to know how you did this. And I want, and it was through the clients just demanding more and more time and that interaction that I, I had to step into it. And as soon as I did, that made sense to them because that's what they really want. They're like, just tell me what to do, right? They're like, I don't care if you type it up, just let's interact together. Um, and so it was very, it was very interesting, but it was hard because I, I, I kind of was like, did I do okay? Are you, did I deliver? Are you happy with what you got? Because I talked for an hour on stuff that I love and I'm excited about. And I do believe everything that I've said to you can be helpful. Um, but I, I don't always know if a conversation is going to be inspiring for them as I hope it can be. It took me a little while to feel comfortable about that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's, it's amazing that, that desire to, to feel worth attached to yes. thing and yes. not the, not the advice. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. it's particularly hard. And I, I know this about you is that you're just such a genius where you're in, in, in your lane that yes. it comes through so easily for you what is so difficult to other people and so it's it's hard it's so hard to step back from that and go yeah no that was actually incredibly valuable to them that's enough well and, and again that's why i credit listening to my clients as the aha behind uh stepping into that value because i it like many people it was easy so why it's not valuable to me this is stuff that i know I would never pay somebody for what I know. And I think as business owners and people that are valuing our time, we forget that the things that are easy for us got there through education, time, you know, intuition, whatever our secret genius is. Um, and that is valuable to all of the people that are like, okay, wait, how do you write a job description? And why do I even have to care? And how do I fire this person? And whatever the questions are that people have, I'm like, oh, well, it's easy. You do, you say this, this, and this, you document this, you have this meeting, you do that. And, and people are like, that's brilliant. I'd never thought of that before. And um, I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, this is great. This is good stuff. But you forget that not everybody knows what you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's super easy to do. So um, tell me if, 
if somebody is feeling held back from having what they want in life, um, I, I think I, I certainly admire how you have made what you want a priority. What, yes. What advice do you have for somebody who feels like they can't do what you've done? Well, I, it wasn't easy. If I'm making it look easy, I'm not I'm being truthful. There were days where I cried, yelled, kicked the, you know, air, wishing there was something harder there to kick. Um, I've had the ups and downs, but for me, the motivator to continue and to do it is I, I just love being able to be in that interaction with that client. Once I see them getting it, when I see that click and um, I recently had a client say to me, you know, if, if I had known what you're teaching me to be as a manager of my own company back when I was younger and I managed in big corporations and other organizations that this person was a part of, my career, my life would be vastly different. If the managers I had had even knew my career, if I could have been under somebody that you're teaching me to be. Um, and so hearing that they get it, they get the depth of it. And I, and I just know they're going to take it and they're going to give it to their teams and their, to their staff and they're motivated. Uh, that's just, for me, that's the motivator is get connected to the piece that I like, which is being with my clients and giving them the answer. And then you create a scalable model around that. And so um, it has to start with my happy factor because my clients, that's what makes them happy, right? If I'm excited and I'm like, we're going to do this, we're going to hire you a this and a that and a those, and we're going to start over here and I'm going to push you a little bit and we're going to work together and you're going to do this on your own, you know, you got to be able to get into it. So I love it and that helps out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing over at bossactions.com. So um, bossactions.com is my uh, membership, online membership site, where I am connecting business owners and uh, that are shifting to boss. There's a difference between being a business owner that's stuck in the overwhelm and you're trying to figure out how to get it all done. And you're like, I just need somebody to help me get this off the desk. And I just want somebody to help that client with that problem. I just need to get bodies in here to the shift of being a boss where you're really like, okay, my business needs this to be successful outside of the personalities and outside of me, this is what my business needs. And then strategically, right? You started with the word strategic, I think mm -hmm. strategically thinking about, okay, my business needs this first because this will free up this many hours for me to give back to my business as a boss. And then we go here and then we go here. So we start creating an organizational structure that is both, intentional see come all around um, both intentional and helps us it's it can be helpful for you the big shift really is understanding it's about your business so what is your business need not what do I need I need someone to rub my feet every day I don't have that that's what I need my business doesn't care if I get foot rubs my business cares if somebody's able to answer the phone if I can get to all of my client meetings on time, if they're scheduled spaced correctly, if I, you know, if I get my content out for them to get to, and it's about, it, it's about, it's about that. So I help with the business owner shift to boss. Cool. And so you're talking about not only the planning piece, but also the practical, like tactical how to's, what do I need to know? Talk yes. About that stuff. Cause absolutely. So, uh, so we started the shift of, you know, what we need to be thinking about. Uh, but currently right now, uh, currently right now, um, our founding members that are joining also get access to a course that I have called ready, aim higher. And that is actually a five step process on how to figure out what you need to hire for and how to write a job description that will attract the right person for the job you need today. And too often people are, you know, copying job descriptions from other companies. And then when they hire people, they're like, it's so weird. This person totally did not match. They were not the right fit. Well, it's because you're hiring for another company for goodness sakes. Right? So there's tools like there's a, the ready aim hire course. I have guidelines. I have a, a forum where the bosses can reach out to each other. So if one of them's having, you know, one of their staff comes in and says, uh, I want you to give me a 50% increase or I am leaving. And you're like, Oh, what do I do? Right? You get on your, community and then you just say hey has anybody ever had this and the bosses share with each other oh I did this have you tried offering this instead if you don't have the cash or your business is going to be fine without them and just make sure you get your processes and done and, and so that community of having someone to have a boss to boss conversation we call it shut the door conversation you know you just want to have somebody you could shut the door grab your bourbon and say what am I supposed to do about this you know somebody just tell me how I'm going to get through this how my business is going to get through it and the personal hurt that goes along with it as a boss 
we can't make it personal, but we've invested time and energy and we had high hopes for this relationship and it might be changing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that community is so key because there, as, as a business owner, it's nearly impossible to, I mean, you can't talk to your employees about these sorts of issues. You shouldn't. Yeah. 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 Well, right. <laughs> you should. Yeah, yeah. Those are- I mean, you know, there's, I mean, there's a time and a place in certain situations, but yeah, you want to, you want to have that outside. And sometimes your spouse might not be a business owner. They might not be a manager. They might not understand the stress of payroll and meeting client demands, right? That's a different, it's a different conversation. It is. It is. And to have people who are going through the same, the same mud you are, man, does that help? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, can I tell you one more thing about it? I'm sorry. So I get, I get all excited. Um, so another thing that we have in there is called, let me write that down. And so the, let me write down that down scripts are actual, a commentary video of me giving the talk to the camera, like they're an employee. So you will see me terminate somebody immediately. You'll see me terminate somebody with 30 day notice. You will see me start a conversation about somebody that's being dressed inappropriately. You'll see experience of what it's like to talk to people about first warnings, last warnings, all these kinds of role plays so that when you're going into these conversations you may have never had to have before, whether you write the whole script down or not is not the point. Now you have a little understanding of these are things to be thinking about. We talk about, you know, if, if they say this, try to think about that. Don't make it personal in this case because they don't care about you right now. You're firing them. We give all these kind of tidbits so that you can go into these roles a little more confidently. One of my favorite pieces in the whole membership site. That's awesome. That's great because it, sometimes having somebody else help you put those words in your mouth is just, it's essential. And having been in positions where I've had to fire people before, it, it's, never, it's never easy or fun ever. I don't, no. Well, so here is, here is the thing is the thing that I say is it's never fun, but it doesn't have to be hard. It can be easy. If you know the steps and you feel, you know, is this really all I'm supposed to be doing? If you get more confident in that, it can be easier because firing doesn't surprise anybody, right? It shouldn't. The employee should know it's coming, right? You're not surprised. If you are, it's an immediate and it's because he did something really egregious and you're like, I have to protect the rest. It's about protecting the rest of your staff and your reputation and your clients. It's not just about you making yourself happy. As a boss, you have a whole bunch of people to be thinking about and that one employee cannot be let to be, you know, infringing on all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tom, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was so great to have you. Thank you. Yeah. If you want to connect, uh, head over to bossactions.com. You can check her out and all the amazing stuff she's doing over there. Um, yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. And uh, just keep up the good work. I love that you're really trying to build this space for everybody to find more comfort in talking about the things that can influence their finances. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.